What's up, folks? Welcome to the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room and Mash and Journey pick selection tonight. Uh, we're going to be picking two peerless barrels. Uh, two peerless, uh, let's see, single barrel rye, a single barrel bourbon for all of our patron supporters tonight. Uh, we have some legendary, legendary viewers here with us tonight. We got, uh, of course, we got the hawk down below with his dad. That is Scotty Tuhati with his dad. We call him Cheeks, but that's <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Scotty? How you doing? In the, how's uh, Kentucky treating you, man? I'm trying to get us some better internet right now. <laughs> All right, he's working on the internet. Uh, on the top, we have uh, Will Hendo Henderson. How you doing, bud? Good, man. How are you? Doing good. Uh, we have Michelle and Will Davilar. Of course, if you guys do not know yet, it is Will Davilar's birthday today. So give him a huge shout out. Raise a glass to Mr. Davilar. Uh, below them, we got, Thanks, we got Mr. Joseph Brazo, Mr. Joseph Brazzers. Peace. <laughs> uh, in the middle, we have uh, Joey Ryan from, uh, from Peerless. How you doing, man? Doing great. Doing great. Happy to be here. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. And then to his, uh, to just below me there, we have uh, Mr. John from Peerless. He is uh, the representative for their single barrel program. He's going to be talking to us about what's been so successful with their single barrels, especially as of late, and uh, talk, you know, talk a little bit to us a little bit behind the scenes about what goes on with the uh, Peerless uh, single barrel selections. Uh, we have three uh, single barrels to choose from when it comes to the bourbon, and we also have three single barrels we're going to be choosing from uh, from the for a. Uh, for a rye, uh, all of them barrel proof, all of them non-chill filtered, uh, all the good, all the good things we love about Peerless, and uh, really, we're really happy to actually get a uh, Peerless pick for the Mash and Journey Whiskey Club. So, so, uh, so, John, why don't you talk a little bit about the Peerless Single Barrel Club and what you guys have uh, experienced lately, and what may, what you think makes the single barrel so successful? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the great thing about our barrel program is that, you know, we actually have a board of us that make up uh, the program. So it's myself, Caleb, our master distiller, and then Nick Clee, one of our um, other distillers. And one of the things I think that like the that makes our program so successful is that every one of us have a veto power. Um, so when we're sitting around, we're tasting through every single barrel. You know, when you come in and want to do a selection or we want to do a virtual selection, we don't just, you know, roll out 10 barrels and say, hey, these are going to be the ones we send them. Um, when barrels become of age, we'll get samples and we'll taste literally through every single barrel um, that we have. Uh, but say Nick and Caleb really like a barrel and I don't think it's up to part of being the program. He respects everyone's opinion. We just pull it out um, and we kind of move on from there. So we're hand selecting each and every barrel that goes into the program uh, based on, you know, uniqueness, as we like to call it, our Easter egg barrels. Ones that are just, you know, uh, out of this world. You know, you don't want to mingle those into batches and things like that. Uh, they're just a great representation of the different flavors and just of our product in general. So I think that's one thing that makes the uh, program so successful is just how uh, tedious we are when we're grading these barrels and going through samples to make sure that these are the best quality barrels. Uh, and, how go, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, how many how many groups have you had pretty uh, recently, especially, you know, do you guys have a cutoff or you just kind of let them go until uh, until there's no more whiskey to be picked? Well, <laughs> it, you know, unfortunately, we are a craft distillery. So, you know, we only make 10 to 12 barrels a day, you know, roughly around 21, 2200 barrels a year. So we have to be very selective by that. I mean, you know, we don't have a lot of barrels to, uh, to go through. So we only do 100 selections a year. We do 50 bourbon and 50 rye, and uh, believe me, if Joey Ryan, if he, if he could have more, he would. Uh, so it's it's definitely um, a little bit of a task because we like to make sure that we, we reach out to new people, uh, but we also take care of, you know, uh, the ones that have been with us, you know, since the beginning, too, as well. That's awesome. Um, what's been what's been more popular, you think, the bourbon or the, or the rye picks? You know... The bourbon is definitely, a, you know, people always want to come in and select the bourbon. That's usually the first thing, you know, do you have any bourbon? But I'll be honest, here lately, our rye is doing fantastic. Our rye has become more and more popular. I think people are starting to, 
venture out and, you know, taste a little bit more rye just because it's not your everyday typical rye that you're used to, you know, your 95.5 blends and things like that. Uh, so I definitely think our rye is on the come up and, you know, we get just about as fair amount as request of rye that we do bourbon now. All right, cool. Um, so, so everybody that's going to help pick tonight, a uh, show of hands, who here has had both the peerless bourbon and a peerless rye before? I've never had the rye before, but I've had a few of the bourbons. All right. Michelle. I've had the bourbon once. Mich Will, you had the bourbon once. Michelle, you've never yeah. had either one? I have not. This is all new to me. Oh, that's awesome. I have not had peerless, yeah. And well, Scotty and and Scotty, you obviously you've had you've had both, correct? Yeah, you're you're uh, you're. Hold on. Yes, sir. Oh, there he goes. What yeah. about your dad? Has your dad had the peerlesses before or no? Uh, just a rye, right? You've had just a rye, just a rye, just a rye. Just a rye. Right. All right, cool. I was in line for the first re release. Was it two years ago? Mm -hmm. I'm a little it, yeah, yeah, was in June, Saturday yeah. afternoon, June, June of nineteen. Yeah, you so you stood in that line in the rain then, huh, Joe? I stood in line and came up after an hour because I had to go to Lexington, so I couldn't wait. So yeah. I had my truck. We we sold every single bottle that day. We literally ran out um, of our inventory. Yeah, that's what I heard. It wow, was, that's crazy. It was, uh, yeah, it was it was an overwhelming overwhelming moment, overwhelming day that day. It was. It was pretty remarkable for us. It really was. That was pretty cool. I tell you something that we find people that come into Peerless uh, and they go through our tasting program and, and everybody sits down. They think, oh, I'm going to love the bourbon. I'm going to just, you know, I'm a bourbon guy. I don't like rye. You wouldn't believe how many people leave the tasting room and go and purchase the pie. We, we definitely are a bourbon drinker's rye. You know, we're a little bit on the sweeter side. We don't use a very high rye content in our mash bill. Um, and we don't disclose our mash bill because it's usually that's always the second question is what's the mash bill. Corky likes keeping that uh, secret, but I promise you it's nothing crazy. But we do use corn, rind, barley in our mash bill. You know, we don't use any wheat. Yeah, I could I can see the I can see it being a little bit more of a high corn mash bill just because of the the sweetness that is there. Um, but yeah, so all right, what do you, what do you guys say we get to pick in here? Absolutely. And uh, and John, if you have any. Anything you want to add in as we're tasting through, please do, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, the only thing I guess I would say is, you know, uh, keep in mind that when we curate these samples, I try to add and make sure each sample are different from each other. So uh, hopefully you all enjoy the samples that we go through. And I know you all, we kind of talked about you all have a certain way you all want to go through and taste these. So like I said, this is your all show. I'm here for questions. Um, there's no proof, age, or anything like that on them. Um, I like to keep everything out of there as possible. Just so that when we're selecting through and we're looking at it for, you know, the aromas, the flavors, not the age and proof and things like that. But other than that, yeah, uh, let's get started. Yeah, I mean, we, lo we love kind of we love kind of going in blind, you know, immediately. So. Uh, the barrel dates are pretty specific. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that too on there. But, you know, some people don't look at those. <laughs> so, uh, so this is uh, sample number one, barrel number one. Uh, so we're going to start with that one first. So uh, this has a nice dark color here. I'll hold this up to the light. You guys can see that one. See that? All right, let's dive in, guys. So again, we're starting with the Peerless Bourbon, everyone. So, I mean, Will, both Wills, Michelle, Joseph, whatever you guys feel like calling out. I really like the nose, personally. It smells like bourbon, but it, there's almost like a like a vanilla ice cream note or something there. Yeah, for me, this is very, very vanilla and like caramel heavy. Yeah. It's got a nice, rich caramel note. It's got something bright on it, though, almost. Yeah. Citrusy. Not quite citrusy, but along in that direction. I could, I could say there's a citrus note to here. I mean, I'd agree on the citrus note. The citrus note is something you get primarily in the regular uh, Peerless, so in the small batch. It's like gingerbread. I'm getting a toasted marshmallow note, which is kind of nice. Maybe that's what it is. Oh, that is what it is. Now that you say that, that's what I was trying to get my yeah. finger on. Yeah, toasted marshmallow. 
Well, anything anyone mentions, I'm going to suddenly get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're like, that's it. That's it. The power compels oh. you. <laughs> I get pork rinds. What do you think? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, smoky, meaty. If, any, yeah. if anyone's going to get pork rinds, it's the hawk. <laughs> Yeah, that's another thing that helps our barrel program out too, you know, is naming these barrels. Uh, we love giving them fun, exciting names based on their flavors and uh, their aromas. So that's another good part of our program too that I really enjoy. Yeah, so Shem, uh, he's helping us over at Kegambala with these. This is the bourbon first, Shem, that we're doing. Um, it's it's pretty bright ethanol -y too. I mean, the ethanol is pretty in your face. I get, anyone get caramel apple? Get in the apple. Yep. You get that fruit, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a nice combo of, uh, of apple, citrus, but it has a little bit of um, kind of like a like a smoky, toasted marshmallow note to it as well. Yeah, I was getting like a woody note almost with it. It's almost yeah. like a, a caramel green apple. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm getting more of like a pound cake. Pound cake. All right, Scott's back. How's that? Any better? Hey, that's, I mean, the camera's not as good, but at least we could hear you and stuff, man. That sounds good. That looks good. Okay. So, Scott, are you getting hand wax in this? Yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a hotel lobby right now, so. <laughs> no. Scott, are you in Kentucky? Yeah. There's yeah. something else. What hotel, yeah, where are you at? Are you in Louisville? We're at the seal box. Okay. Getting a, getting a maple note get. as well, like a maple, maple syrup. Maple yeah. syrup? No. Yeah, just the, just the, more it, the more I yeah. smell it, the richer it's getting on the back yep. end. Yep, absolutely. The corn is coming through as well, like fresh corn. Oh, yeah. You have to get the corn note. Yeah. Scotty, you have a chance to dive into this one yet? No. Uh, yes and no. <laughs> All right, man. You're just killing me. I'm not getting the deep, dark, rich kind of fruits. Yeah, this is this is a little bit brighter, uh, a little bit more caramel, vanilla heavy. It's got a slight smoke char maple syrup thing going on, but really good. I'm gonna, you guys, ready to try this one? Yep. yep. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Here we go. Oh. Well, are you on two right now or one still? No, we just. We just sipped one. Hmm. Oh. There's proof there. <laughs> <laughs> what did I just get on the back? What I just got a very distinct note on the back end of that. I'm trying to figure out what that was. Leather. Shoe leather. Was that what it was? Leather? It's a very first I got was leathery. I don't know if that's mouthfeel or, or palate, but I <clears throat> see. I get the caramel apple on the palate now. We have yep. the caramel apple earlier. Yeah, the caramel apple definitely comes through. I I see where you're getting the leather though from Joseph a little bit. Yeah, I'd agree. Man, you know, I am tasting just a little hint of floral in there. Yeah, like a like an elderberry flower. Oh. That's interesting. That's pretty specific, Michelle. Yeah. I, I, I cook with them, and that's exactly what it reminds me. We had a single barrel not too long ago named, um, well, I think it was Wild Elderberries, is what one of our single barrels were down at the distillery. So it's funny, oh, you, really? mentioned, it's funny you mentioned that note. It was good, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. It is, and it is a bit floral, but the caramel apple comes through. And I get a little bit of clove on the very back end, like a little spice, like a little clove. Yeah, spice. That's, that's good, yeah. You know what I, I get? It sounds weird, but it's it's I can't get rid of it. I can't get out of my mind. It's like the, the Ritz crackers with no salt on them. You can get saltless, sodium-free Ritz crackers. I get yeah. that. I don't know if it's part of the toastiness, but there's a kind of a Ritz cracker -y note on it. Yeah, it's kind of that toasty feel to it. I wanted to just tell him a little bit dry. Just a little bit dry. I wanted to tell Scott to go to the bar, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't be able to hear us in the bar. 
Now I'm getting that leather that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a little bit of leather. Poor Scott, he's frustrated down there. Hope you're all right, man. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call this an, an overly sweet bourbon. Mm. No, I think I, I, I love the flavors up front, but I, I agree. Fruity. It's, yeah. You know, it's woody. I, I like. It's yeah. I, I do like the flavors up front, but I agree. It gets a little bit drying and leathery on the back end, which kind of and the and it's not like a not like a long like oak sweet leathery finish. It's a little bit more of a drying finish. Yeah. On that one. There's a tartness on that finish. I'm having trouble placing. Scott, what do you, uh, Scott, what do you, what do you think of this one? Can you hear us? I, I, I think, I think with one, you do, you get like some of that kind of more like green, green citrus, some like maybe vanillas and honeys, things like that. Oh yeah, honey for sure. Honey, honey is kind of like the trademark, yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of like kind of a maybe a leather, sweet tobacco notes in this one. All right. So that's one. You guys take your notes on number one. Yes. All right. Let's uh, let's jump to number two. So the last three last three digits is uh, one hundred one. And this one already looks a little bit darker than number one. So I'm going to dive into number two here. Better color. Darker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I like the nose on this one already. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It's very good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm getting I'm getting more of that I'm getting more of that floral quality to it, but it's like mixed with like I'm getting like sprite, like uh, lemon lime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a lemon and lime it's like syrup or something. Yeah, like a lemon lime simple <laughs> syrup. Yeah. You're up with like a fresh bag of bread. Also kind of me of. Oh yeah, it is kind of bready. That's a good yeah, yeah, there's definitely a little bit of yeah, definitely a little bit of like a yeah, doughy oh, note or something. Good bread. Oh, I can see that for sure. Like pizza dough, like yeah. I think. Oh, this I like nose is great. Stuff. Yeah, it's not as it's not as corn forward, but I feel like it's no. a little bit more. I don't know. There, there's something more dense to this one. Right. You can yeah, yeah, you can there. smell it. You don't have yeah. to try to. You know, the first one kind of hits you with this, and then it builds. This yeah. one's there from the beginning. So, Tim, yeah, just to recap, guys, we are selecting a uh, a peerless bourbon and a peerless rye for the uh, whiskey club. So, yeah, this is a baked good all day. Yeah, it's yeah, very like peach. Uh, a lot, like a lot a, of peach. Like cobbler or a coffee cake somewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, dude, I was totally. I was yeah. told, I was totally thinking coffee cake, but like with like like syrupy peaches on in it. Oh, that's that's nice. It, it even has I like, like a toasted almonds on it. <laughs> Scotty, what are you thinking of this one, man? Yeah, definitely some nice some nice rye, some doughy aspect to it. A little bit of like a little bit of like lemon, a little some like lemon citrus there. Yep. All right. Um, a little bit of a. Say again. Maybe a little bit of like nutty characteristic kind of there. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go out and get a pastry oh, after. It's weird. As opposed to coconut, I think this is like a flat Mountain Dew. There's more of a. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, Seven Up and this great is pretty like flavorless. A little more, little more, a little more like uh, ethanol in the nose on this one than the first. Oh, one. No, I, I, first one was a lot more ethanol. Yeah, to me. At least it was more. The first one you thought was you thought the first one was more ethanol. Yeah, that's the first thing I got was ethanol. This one, it's not the first thing I got. Mm. The nose is a lot deeper and richer on the. Yeah, it's a little bit more rounded on number two. Whatever the flavors are, it's deeper and richer on the nose. Mm. All right, guys, let's go for a sip. Let's try number two. Cheers. Oh, that's really good. Oh, that's better than I thought it would be. Way sweeter. That lemon lime is coming through, actually. Yeah. I got a lot of lemon lime on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. A little more, a little more, a little more viscous on this one. Yeah, it's def that's a good call out, Scott. It's definitely more mouth coating than number one as well. Mm -hmm. 
I would, yeah, definitely. A little, little more like a like a velvety texture to this one. John, what are you John? What are you picking up on number two? Are you getting any of these? Uh, did it come off sweeter than you thought it would? Talking to me, sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, now, I, uh, now the nose on this one was fantastic, but I think it definitely delivered with the sweetness on the palate too. Uh, for me, when I first take to this one, it gets like a dark, rich, it almost like a burnt kind of like caramel sweetness to it. I mean, it's definitely got some toasted or burnt qualities to it. I get coffee at the power. This yeah, this almost has a little bit of a toast, like a toasted, like a toasted aspect. Yeah. There's like a little bit of like a mar yeah. burnt marshmallow oh. something on this one. Yeah, what'd you say, Michelle? I was saying it reminds me a lot of a a lime mm -hmm. like lightsaber candy. Oh, okay. Probably the coating. Yeah, because the coating that you would get yeah. from it. Yeah. Yeah. It's got it's gonna hit you on like the, the back of your like sides of your tongue, kind of like citrus. Right. Yeah, yeah, totally. It like makes you pucker. Kind of weird. Yeah. And, this and is I, one of the ones I think that definitely highlights the fact that you know it's a non-chill filter. The fact that we have all those delicious oh, yeah. everything in there that really helps. It's really good. And then, I mean, in this thing, I mean, I don't know if this is a knock or not, but this does not have a finish that I'm used to with Peerless. The finish is quick. It doesn't really linger. It, it's kind of an easy sipper, which is interesting for, you know, you're talking barrel proof, you're talking, you know, uh, what you're used to with Peerless. So the finish on it is not long, but it's got a lot of like sweet flavors going on. No, it's, it's yeah. definitely a yeah. good way to put it. it. Definitely for me on the finish, it has a big burst to it, but then like, you know, it doesn't stick around as long as some of the others, but it, it does pack a pretty powerful and flavorful um, kind of into it. Yeah, this this is all like lemon, lime, soda, Mountain Dew, like like poured, poured over like a caramel, like candy or something. Tell you what, coming yes. from this one, for number two, to go back to number one, number one, becomes more woody and slightly astringent and bitter. Yeah. So don't go the other way. <laughs> don't go the other yeah. way. Yeah. Num number one definitely has like a wood sap quality to it on the nose now. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's actually even drier. Yeah. Two, two become yeah. Two becomes way more like memorable than one for sure. Oh, for sure. It doesn't drink as hot. I don't know if it's the lack of or not the lack of oak, but the, yeah. I mean that's the thing. The lower yeah. oak. It doesn't, yeah. drink as hot. It, it doesn't drink nearly as hot and the finish is easy but it still has like a burst of flavor on the back end hendo what are you thinking about too I, I really like it i think a lot of people would like it too i mean there's you know the big um freaking toasted barrel boom or whatever the heck's going on right now yeah there it's is a lot of the same notes there is a toasted aspect to it for sure yeah, that was that was my that was my thought too it's it's got that toasted marshmallow I wouldn't go as far as like coconut or anything, but there is that toasted camp kind of being around a campfire aspect to it. Yeah, uh, yeah it's actually it's really, it's really refreshing. And it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's sure, like, and like that is very refreshing. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I'm sure Caleb covered it yesterday, but you know, we use Calvin Cooperage. We do a medium toast with a level three char inside each and every barrel too. Yeah, and you know what? The more you go back to it, the more like as it's opening up here, the nose is getting more and more toasty and a little bit of smoke. And and the but the palate to me, I'm getting that a little bit, but I'm more getting the you know the the citrus burst, which is really interesting. See, I find the nose the nose wins. I mean, as much as I like the palate, I like the nose better. I mean the yeah. nose is really impressive. I could smell this all day. Scott, Scott, overall on the palate, what are you thinking of this one, man? For a two you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I mean I I mean I, I guess I, I guess I prefer I mean I so far prefer two over one. I think two is a little more little more memorable, but I think what I think what Brazer said when you go back to one, there's a little more little more woody notes to it. Yeah. All right. I think two hey, what the north improves when you go back to it from yeah. this. Say again, the nose, the nose say, again uh, say, say again, Michelle. I think I think two comes out real hard and fast, whereas one comes in softer and lingers. 
Oh yeah, I, I would say one definitely lingers more. Two, two has like a nice burst of flavor, but it is it just, it just drinks really soft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the I think the finish, I, I think the finish on two is even a little bit if you if you kind of think about it too. It, it's a little bit longer than you may think it is. It's it's a pretty nice finish on two, I think, actually. Yeah, you get a nice little burst at the end, but it's almost like I want it to last longer because I like that burst. Well, yeah. I think one you know, on the palate and the finish was a little spiky. You kind of came up here and did this. Whereas mm -hmm. this is flatter, more... It does. It drinks, it drinks I don't know. From a wine parlor? For, from, from coming from the wine world, this, I don't know, I don't know how many are going to get it. People who drink wine are going to get it. This one tastes more flabby, more fatty, more mm -hmm. just. Well, I mean, it's definitely got more viscosity to it. Yeah. I, I think I like the profile more than one overall. Yeah. But I, still, not, I, I don't know. There's, there's something about it. Maybe it's the finish. Maybe the finish for me is just missing a little bit. There's, yeah. there's nothing spiky or bright about it, though. It doesn't have a, a counterbalancing flavor. Yeah. All which right. I think is pretty nice. it, it definitely, um, the finish on number two leaves me wanting to take another sip because it almost makes like a little bit of savory. It leaves my mouth watering. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, oh. I, I want to take another drink of this now. Yeah. Yeah, savory is actually yeah. When you, go back, to, when you go back to one, what one's got like a little bit of a uh, like a bitter or, or a, like a tannic note or something on one a little bit. You know what I got when I went back? Popsicle stick. What? You chew on a popsicle stick when you're done? Yeah, the wood, smell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I yeah I went back to that and I got more. Wow. I got more orange and like creamsicle on number one when I went back to it. That's it's a new one. I haven't heard. That's exactly I like it. what. Yeah, that was a new one I haven't heard. heard. So Joseph, you just you just brought a new one, chewing on a popsicle stick. I haven't heard that one. <laughs> there, I, I I got it now. Yeah. What you're gonna find with these two, and I don't want to extend it any longer. When you're when we're done tonight, go back and revisit these, and watch how they've changed. Oh, that's oh, oh, that's from that that non chill filtration. A lot of those fatties and those lipids are staying in. There. So Swan might know what a flabby wine tastes like. Uh, David, had, late, late to the party. So, if it's a repeat, how has their whiskey changed over time? Maybe you could. Uh, maybe that's something for you to answer, John. Um, how do you feel so, like you know from the beginnings of you know what you guys released, how it's evolved? Um, you know, so our rye. You know, when our rye first hit the market, it was two year old. You know, we're getting up there around four and five years old in the rye. Uh, the bourbon came out at a four year old. And we're getting up there with the five and um, a little bit in the six, too, as well. But it's definitely amazing to see some of the flavors and the change. You know, when our rye first came out, right around that two-year mark, we were getting tons of butterscotch, vanilla, things like that, um, where we've, we've kind of lost that flavor profile a little bit in the rye, and you're getting more um, these deep citrus kind of chocolate notes and things that are coming out. And same thing with the bourbon, you know, you're just seeing um, it mature a little bit. You're seeing all these different flavor notes come about. And uh, like I said, we keep a one story rig house. We only go five to six high. Um, we're more worried about the airflow than the temperature change inside of our rigs. Okay. So as, as it gets older, you know, we're seeing that proof go up a little bit in some of these, but uh, just the, the change of flavor that's happening is amazing. Uh, and real quick, uh, I think we covered this a little bit last night, but you can kind of reiterate it if you want. How do you guys pick out distillery picks for your tasting room? So when we – for the, the distillery picks, you know, the, all they do is they get selected the same way as a single barrel selection would. Um, Caleb goes through the box um, that we have these samples of all the barrels that are available for single barrels, and he'll just pick the ones out of there that he likes um, occasionally. So the only difference, there's, so there's really no difference between the distillery picks and the ones you all go through. Um, those are just the ones that our master distiller selects um, that he really likes out of the barrels. Yeah, he yeah. What what he's trying to say is he picks them really quick and they set them aside before I before I find out about them and, and get my hands <laughs> on. <them. laughs> sometimes sometimes I go back into his box and take you know one or two back out. Yeah, I can see. I can see Joey just sitting there, like, God, what the hell are you doing? We, we, you know, come on. 
every time I taste one of our distillery picks, that's what I, I think and say. Seriously? You can't <laughs> let me have that? Come on. <laughs> All right, guys, let's move on to number three. And uh, let's see what we get here. So this is the uh, the third sample. I cheated. It smells great. Yeah, Holy <laughs> crap, it smells good. I, I get cotton candy. Anybody getting cotton candy? No, but I'm getting candy or something. Yeah, that's all. It's like a nice, like vanilla, really nice, like vanilla custard pastry, like almost like a vanilla ice cream, like uh, like a maybe even going almost. As as, like, oh, it's one of those like an eclair. It's an eclair with the stuff in it. Yeah, there's a bready note there too. It's vanilla ice cream and something yeah, like a vanilla apple, like apple pie or something like oh, vanilla yeah. apple. Or, I can't get eclair out of my head now. Or yeah, like a. Yeah. Uh, my mother used to make them. What do you get? You know, like, you know, the top of like a Dutch apple pie, the crumble. I'm kind of getting like that. Yeah. Like pastry crumble. Yeah. I'm getting some of that, some of that apple pie filling, though, too. You know, the goopy, yeah. extra sweet, cinnamony stuff. It's yeah. Not as dark as you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Michelle and Will, what are you guys getting on this one? What do you think so far? It reminds me of an apple cobbler. Yeah, I'm getting more of a, yeah. like, a creme yeah. brulee, though. Yeah. Okay. Maybe creme brulee topped with some of that gooey apple pie filling. Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> really good. It's good. It's really good. Yeah, it smells awesome. I just hope it translates to the palate a little bit. Yeah, this, yeah it's got a great note. It's got it a does great have that toasted note to it again, though. Yeah, there is a little bit of that toasted note. Maybe the top of like that torched creme yeah. brulee a little bit. Yeah, the creme brulee. Mm -hmm. It's probably what I'm. Or just like a little bit of an apple pie crust. You know? It's... Yeah, that's been, that's been a, a little bit well yeah. done. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm still yeah, getting the cotton. Bit of chocolate. Yeah, but I'm still getting the cotton candy too. There's a very like underlying sweetness to it. Not nearly as dark as two. If you go back and smell two, two is super dark now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. You still, you still like there's still a little yeah. bit of that toasted that little bit of that toasted like gray, coffee. Coffee. Yeah, two two to me now, it smells like a freaking campfire. Yeah, it's very well, dark. I'm not getting the smoke though. Oh man, I'm getting all smoke on number two. I'm getting pure campfire smoke on number two. Yeah, so uh, with that being said, these samples, you know, they stay in a barrel until we send them out and everything. So uh, sometimes, like I said, the great thing about, you know, the non chill filter barrel strength is, as Joey kind of said, watching how these samples change um, as they sit here and continue to open up. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll run. We'll run through them again real quick, uh, again, to, before we make our selection. But I'm ready to try number three because it smells amazing. So, Tony, when you get AB nose AB, and then you go back to one, the nose is gone. <clears throat> Did anybody else get milk chocolate on that nose on number three? Like an eclair. Yeah. 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 Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, three three is three seems to be like really nice and complex. It's got a lot of a lot going on in three. Mm. That's good. Still got the citrus note. Yeah. Oh man, number three on the palate is delicious. Yeah, it's soft, really soft. Yeah, yeah. coating. It, it's soft, but it's got like a little bit of a sneaky finish to it too. Right. Yeah, it comes yeah. up. That, that finish has a little bit of bite in there, but it's a good bite. Yeah, it's a nice. It's not a. It's not a proof yeah. bite. No, no. Yeah, very approach. There's there's a, little, there's a little more proof on this one though. Yeah, I think there's more proof there. That's what I was thinking. I think it really tastes to me like there's. It's sneaky proof, but there's proof there. Yeah, it's it's a warming proof. It doesn't hit you. It doesn't go right. Hey, I'm yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's a it's a, a Kentucky hug for sure. Yeah. That's that's the best finish out of all of them. But I'm getting all the pastry. I'm getting all the pastry and the um, the creme brulee, the vanilla, some more citrus too. I'm all, it's all coming back on the palate for me on this. It's uh that was that was pretty delicious. I think this palate matches the nose. Best. It does. I'm I'm still getting some of the apple there too. Yeah, even that caramel apple yeah. still. It's definitely got some mint in it. Yeah. Yeah, much much nicer, like complexly, like overall complexity three round. Yeah, it's, it's dark flavors. It's got some white flavors. It's got yeah, it's deeper and, and and I could see this one really kind of evolving over time too. Uh, John, fearless John, what are you getting, man? 
So on the palate for me, the finish, what I like about this one, if you ever remember being a kid and eating like Pop Rocks with like a soft drink, it leaves like this kind of fruity, tingly feeling of, across my palate that I really enjoy uh, mm -hmm. on this third one. And I hate to say this, but it just reminds me of an older whiskey. Like, uh, yeah. you know, it feels like it's a little bit older than what it actually is. Yes, that's a perfect way to describe it. There's a... There's something about it that's making me, it's got like a little bit of a dusty character to it. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, maybe but even like a, a little bit of like a, a little bit of like a tropical fruit or something there, kind of. So yeah, see, when I when I first sipped it, Scott, I thought I got pineapple. Yeah. Nope. But then yeah, you realize this would have really opened up well, too. Yeah. There's almost a funk to it, you know what I mean? It just like, like yeah. you were saying, there's yeah. that funk, and I think that's the tropical note you're getting. Is that kind of that weird, not weird, but you know what I mean? That kind of funky flavor. Maybe Scott, do you remember when we had the uh, the rye tide and it almost like felt like it was matured in rum cask? Maybe that's it has that a little bit of a of an influence yeah. on it, you know? I still have the yeah. bottle of the rye tide. I mean, I, I mean, I think I think like over like overall like from that complexity standpoint, like three just really stands out amongst like all of them i mean just i mean as far as what it offers i mean the balance of it from the nose just on the palate it's just man three like shines and you can yeah. see like jason said i think as this bad boy opens up a little bit it's gonna really it'll really get nice nice I would, I would agree with you definitely yeah, yeah this one's never having had peerless um you know like i'm kind of a virgin palate as far as peerless is i don't know what's on profile and I don't know what's off profile. If I had to guess, though, I would say this was, if you wanted to be on profile, you would pick this one. I'm guessing. Yeah, I have you nothing know? to gauge that with. And I've never had this. But of the three, that's the most complex but cohesive. All of them. And that's that's probably a good thing for you guys, because now you're not, going in with any, you're not going in with any sort of, of notions of what it what it should be or what it is. You're just going off of what you think tastes the best. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, for, for me, I, I'm going to go through and I, I urge you guys real quick before we make our selection, just nose and sip one and two again, real quick before we make our selection, just to, uh, just to, you know, make sure that nothing, going, is, nothing is changing the glass. Going back to one from three, it's the nose is all chocolate. Yeah, the palate is too. It's all what? Chocolate. You go from there on, 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 on one, three, back to two. If you go back to two, it's all chocolate. <clears throat> I, I'm almost struggling to find like a lot of notes in one now. It just doesn't, there's not much there. No, there. Yeah, there's, I, no, I, there's no notes. Yeah, anymore. it's not. Yeah, one, I'm still getting that. Um, like for me, it's become very floral. The maple is coming out more, and yeah, the chocolate I can definitely see. No, no, no. Two going back from three to two, two becomes all chocolate on the nose. Oh, two, you're saying is chocolate. One, one oh, has two. nothing. On it. Yeah, two. Yeah, two for me is all smoke. I can't, I can't get over the campfire like s'mores chocolate. Yeah. Nose on it. But the thing is, you go back to two. Like two becomes like very flat. Like two is flat yeah. compared to three. Like that's three, right, like three right. explodes with like yeah, the complexity and spice and like any anyone anyone that loves a toasted bourbon on the nose would love to, yeah. but it falls exactly it falls flat on the palate. Well, it's because there's no brightness yeah. to it. Nothing. Yeah, there's yeah, there's nothing there's nothing yeah. jumping out at all. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, like it's flat. Flat. three is the best yeah. about it. Yeah. It's got some brightness. It's got some some spikes. It's got some darker, yeah. richer flavors. Yeah. This is a really it's balanced. Cool, it's a cool comment. Peerless has no on profile. There's such a crazy variation of single barrels. That's what makes them great. The whiskey nerds. And I, I totally agree with that. Uh, Shem uh, says, John, where does that signature, <laughs> where does that signature honey note come from? Uh, the signature honey note, you know, I, I honestly, I don't really have any answer for that one. You know, uh, you know, Kelvin Cooperage, they make a great quality of barrels. So, I mean, I, I do pay a lot of, uh, attention to just you know what they're doing and stuff over there at Calvin but you know between just our distillation you know uh, using a sweet mash we're going to produce a little bit sweeter beer as well so we do get a lot more of those kind of a sweeter floral and honey notes um, throughout that too as well 
Man, number three just reminds me of going to Ringling Brothers Circus as a kid and just eating about a pound of cotton candy. They almost Jason. smell like the circus peanuts, too. I never was a fan of them, but they, I did like the smell of the circus Yeah. Peanuts. Oh, yeah. that's so good. Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah, guys. Yeah, three, yeah, three, three really stands out. All right, yeah, so everybody, sure. raise your hand if you want number one. Raise your hand if you want number two. Raise your hand if you want number three. I think y'all should bottle three and make a candle out of two. <laughs> I like I like it. Yeah. I want to I want to take two on like a camp uh, a camping trip with me because it's like a nice easy sit part all night and it'll go right along with the campfire. It's a, you know, so I think we should all raise our hands up casually. <laughs> <laughs> raise your hands up casually. So, the funny thing about that one is, you know, uh, this one had number three had winner written on there because Caleb made sure he goes, no, you, you let me know if they don't select that barrel there. He's like, you know, I like to revisit that one for uh, maybe putting up front. So very happy that you all got to. Enjoy well, uh, yeah, tell tell Caleb that it's ours now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, nice. All right. So, uh, so serial number B161107. Last three digits, 110. Barrel number three is the winner. That is going to be our Peerless Bourbon selection. Uh, awesome. That's awesome, guys. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go around real quick. Uh, Hendo, if you could pick out a note in number three that was your favorite, what was that note? Ooh. Um. On the nose or palate? Both. Either or. Hold on. Go to somebody else. <laughs> All right, Michelle and Will. I would I get that creme brulee still coming through on it, and it just kind of coats on the taste, and you can get it in the smell as well. Yep. Michelle, what do you think? I think for me it was that, that apple cobbler creme brulee with that, that sneaky little mint kick. Yep. Joey, what do you think, man? I'm sorry, Joseph. I forgot this is Joey. My grandmother called me I just, Joey. I just called. I just called Brazzers Joey. <laughs> nice. He's been called worse. He's been called, called worse. Brazzers, what do you think? What was your favorite note that you got on the number three? Apple pie filling. Apple pie. Okay. Yeah. With, you know, a little touch of chocolate in there. Scotty, uh, Scotty, what do you think, man? Man, I, I just like I like the like the toasted marshmallow, and there's even like a slight. I don't know. Does anybody get any like a little bit of a mint aspect? But I like the toasted marshmallow. That's yeah, on the Michelle, end, right? Michelle called out mints. Absolutely. Yeah, I I was gonna say though, I'm a big turkey drinker, and that there's a little yeah. bit of funk in there. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. that. Three is great. Yeah, three is great. Maybe we could do some carnal like like. like some fun like funky apple pie. Uh, <laughs> 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 As, as you know, number three, if you back away a little bit, the chocolate pops up. Yeah, there's definitely that that, that toasted those toasted notes that you normally get, like the the chocolate you'd normally get on a toasted bourbon or something. Yeah. There's a lot of that in there. Yeah, there is. Really good. There was a really interesting, complex mix of chocolate, like old bourbon funk, with like poppy mint flavors. Then you got the apple pie creme brulee thing going on. This is, this has a vast amount of flavors. I can see Caleb wanted why he wanted this barrel, but now it is ours. So, yeah. uh, uh, Caleb. 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 The mint was a good note, and I, I think it was uh, Hendo that mentioned um, being a wild turkey drinker. And when I had said older, dusty, that's exactly what it reminds yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. So I really enjoyed that note out of there. What what was the number on that on that pick again on this barrel? That was the one ten. The whole number. Oh. Uh B one six one one zero seven one one zero. Bow, 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 bow. It's funky apple. Bunk, bow, Very good. Bow, bow. Great. <laughs> Yeah, this this reminds me a little bit. Of, I have a I have a little bit of an older. Uh, I have an Austin Nichols 101 uh, Wild Turkey bottle, and this this has a little bit of that finish on it. No, absolutely. All right, that's the winner. All right, guys, we are moving to Rye right now. We're gonna go to Rye.
I'm wow, excited. the first one is dark. Yeah. Barrel one. So same thing, John, with this. Barrel one, two, three in order, in that order? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Just All to right. go go. So the first one, just because of one of the first and second one have the same last three digits, it could be 07 14 104, then 05 18 104. All right. Okay. Yeah. Then 109. Okay. <laughs> I'm excited about these. I haven't had these yet. Oh, I'm super excited. I, I'm a huge rye whiskey fan, and I know everyone loves bourbon, but I absolutely love our rye. Um, I mean, I drink this stuff all the time. You know, I, I know it sounds horrible to say, but I'm just I'm a huge fan of our rye. Damn, number one. Consume a little bit. Number so one is good. number one is freaking dark. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look how dark that is. Now, I generally don't like rice, so this will be fun. <laughs> you, I could, if I could tell you how many times I've heard that people come in and say, you know, typically I don't like rice or I don't drink rice. Um, and usually we typically have something that they're going to love there. Because normally I, I do like I do like the not pre single barrel rye, and I like ice that they're barely rye. I am so, not. I love, it's almost like it's a little bit like a mint chocolate chip or something. Anybody get that in this? Oh, Scott already dove in. Sorry. I, yeah, I haven't gotten that yet. Well, I can't yeah. not get it now, Scott. <laughs> yeah, you can't. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you're, yes, if you remember what John, yeah, if you remember what John said, we're going to on a rise. A rise are more of a bourbon drinker's rise. Yeah. So yeah, there's yeah. gonna be there's gonna be we're gonna have a little bit more corn in there than what you're probably used to in some of the ryes. This is not a 95 percent or 100 percent. So. Oh my God! Look who is in the chat right now. It is Nancy Fraley. Your rye is Stratospheric. Oh, no. oh my God, Nancy Fraley, how have you been? I have missed you. Thank you for uh, joining in tonight. Yeah. Dark. Dark. I don't know if it's a suggestion, but I cannot get thin mints out of my nose. No, yeah. Yeah, there's there's a nice like chocolate minty Andy's candy thing going on on this. Maybe even like Absolutely. a little bit like a, is that a little orange citrus, maybe a little bit on that. Yeah, on the end of it for sure. There is that flower note, like uh, like a floral. Really sweet on the end. Yeah, uh, Caleb, yeah. Mentioned, Caleb mentioned last night that there's a you know a distinct floral note to a lot of yeah. the fearless uh, rise. So that doesn't surprise me. But there's still like a darkness to it that I really really like. Uh, I love darker notes and, and bourbons and rise. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of yeah, the chocolate orange balls you get at Christmas. Oh, yes, yeah. the ones that break apart into the little mm -hmm. orange yeah. pieces. Yep. Wait, what did you say, Michelle? What at Christmas? Uh, those orange chocolate balls that break apart in segments. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah, there is a lot of orange on here. You know, I'm getting some coconut, too. Yeah. Like Almond Joy, you know, or Mount yeah, Chocolate. Almond like almond. Chocolate really starts to come out in this. In that dark uh, chocolate. Uh, Scott, yeah, Scott, that's what I can't get over is the chocolate yeah. to me is really strong mm -hmm. on this one. It's like a baker's chocolate. It's not overly sweet. It's not over too dark. Yeah, it's definitely, yeah, along those lines. Some dark, nice dark fruits there, too. Yeah, I can't tell what the fruits are yet, though. But they're there. Yeah, yeah nice berry. Like some nice berries. It's like a date or something. It's like it's dark. Like a pot. No, it's like a pot. Is it, is it like sun made raisins? Yeah, definitely. Oh, one of the knockoff brands. <laughs> what? Like, 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 like Walmart raisins? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's that sweet. No, like spe specific no, raisins. Where they come from? Yeah, it uh, must give a pun. Nancy Fraley. Yeah, yeah. so, so wishing I had some of this rye this evening. It's been a little while since I've had a peerless rye. Oh, man. Tammy Brennicke is calling you out, Brazzers. Get mama a good rye. <laughs> nice. Ask her if she's gotten another one of those uh, cask strength ryes from Woodenville. She was supposed to get one. I wonder if she did. I'm getting a little bit of the honey note, too, on this rye yeah. a little bit. Man, yeah, this, this, like, uh, this, this smells awesome. Right? 
This this smells awesome. I'm going for a sip. Cheers, guys. That little rye bread comes out too in this. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Oh yeah. Oh, I can't stop smelling it. Shit. I know. It's got really good coating. Yeah, it's it's very it's very rich. Yeah. Oh. It's. I think it's the same as the palate again. <laughs> yeah, very, 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 very much, very much. I'm getting I'm black. black. Anyone, any get, anyone getting like black cherry on the palate? Yeah, I was getting like a black yeah. cherry, or black licorice, almost a little bit on that too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Back the palate. Yeah, there's like a nice right on the back. Like that's like a sweet <laughs> <laughs> That is that is not your ninety-five five by any means. That is, no, but no. Just, very say again, good. say again, Scotty. Where were you getting? I'll say like a like a sweet pipe tobacco, like maybe more what you smell, you yeah. know, than, than like yeah. obviously what you taste, but a nice kind of sweet tobacco note. Yeah, and the heat doesn't show like the soft pelt for the, the back. That 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 fires up. Yeah, it's, it's got some roof to it. It's. Really I know we're on number one. Yeah, I know we're on number one, but. Did you have like preconceived notions of what you were going to taste just because of the rye? Was there expectations? Oh, it's a rye. I'm going to taste something in this that just completely blew your mind that it wasn't like that. I'm not getting yeah. any herbal notes at all. I had no expectation. Because, you know, I was expecting some herbalness, and there's not. There's none of it there. Yeah, I agree. I think. I think there's a, a little, a little bit more of that herbal more on the palate than there is the nose, though. A but it might be like mint, like, though. It's not like a, you know, like a. No. No. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not, <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting. I'm not getting the mint like punch on the palate. It's coming off a lot sweeter to me on the palate. Yep. Somebody said black cherry earlier. If you ever had a chocolate cake glazed donut, it reminds me of like a black cherry chocolate glazed cake donut. If you. With yeah, I I can't get past the the, the black cherry note on, on the palate. Yeah, it's yeah. delicious. Delicious. It's can't even talk. It's delicious. That's English. Not quite right? Dr. That's Pepper, English. but it's, it's it's there. That's 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 delicious. I mean, two yeah. and three have a lot of work to do. Just saying. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and I know we kind of talk about, you know, one thing that we always, you know, um, strive on, strive on at Fearless is, you know, everyone's palate's different. There's no wrong answer when it comes to yeah. these things. Um, but I will say that they do say women have better palates than men. They say you all can smell and taste better than we That's do. right. So we're, we're really yeah. leaning, we're leaning heavily on Michelle. She just doesn't know it yet. Yeah. yeah. No, pre no pressure. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Historically, Scotty's palate is shit. <laughs> We have, we have a lady at work, um, Peyton Beal. She, oh, yeah. helps, uh, she helps name some of these, most of these barrels, uh, just because she's very good. And she has a great palate as well. Yeah, yeah. You beat me to it, John. I was just getting ready to say the same thing. Peyton. Yeah. Peyton's probably got one of the best palates at the distillery, actually. Tell you what, because normally I'll make rise, obviously the spiciness, and there's spiciness to this, but you know, it's dill and mint and kind of vegetal qualities. This has none of that. Yeah. It's somehow spicy. Yeah. Maybe it's baking spices spicy. I'm not getting the dill, the vegetables, the This is just yeah. Yeah. good. A, a lot of the spice I get is you know, more fruit than baking spices. It's not yeah. a lot of that other stuff. I'm just getting yeah. like, I can't get past like the cherry Garcia, like minty ice cream yeah. flavor. I'm getting some cherry there for sure. Yeah. Ben, ben and Jerry's got it right. <laughs> it's funny, people often ask, you know, how come rye labels are always green? And I think because, because there's green flavors in traditional ryes. Yeah. You know, the grassiness and the mints and the dill and that kind of thing. Now whatever, whatever, whatever we, whatever we pick, we gotta, we gotta send to Adriana because she, I, I don't know if she's not her life she's like yet. <laughs> yes. If I, if I could sum up the first one that we just tasted, this is something that you could put in front of a bourbon lover to have them if you were trying to convert them to a rye. Oh, yeah. I think this one is definitely a, a good one for that. Yeah, it's it's a nice blend of traditional uh, traditional like Kentucky rye notes on the sweeter side, but with like an extra with an extra layer of like sweetness to it and some fruit flavor, some dark fruits, 
Um, a little bit of that florality to it, some honey that that Peerless is known for. That's a nice one. So John, I built, uh, I built a lot of uh, blinds for some of these channels and um, used to do more. Uh, I'll get back on it. But anyway, so uh, this would be a fun one to throw in there and say, pick the rye. Um, because it's not very right forward, so that would be a fun one. Yeah, yeah. But I was gonna say it almost reminds me of just like a light whiskey, not necessarily a rye. Uh, yeah. You ever have like a tanium light whiskey and like that? What it kind of reminds me of. Yeah. Uh, Michelle, what are you saying? Oh, I was just saying uh, when we went up to visit Adriana, her and I both agreed neither one of us like rye at all. <laughs> she has got to try this. Yeah. Everything I don't like about rye is not. This there you go. Awesome. See, Adriana, I know you're watching. First of all, Adriana, I hope you're feeling better. And uh, we're going to, whatever we pick, we'll, well, we'll see what we pick first. So let's go to number yeah. two. Let's go to number two, guys, because number Did one, we've been kind of we've been kind of waxing, we've been kind of waxing poetic on number one here for a little while. Michelle, that's <laughs> where I was going at with my question earlier. So that, that you answered that right there. So I, I think what you're getting from what we have in our rye is, is, is completely off kilt from what your expectation, what you get in a traditional run. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Oh, number two smells freaking good too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. People like the nose on one. Yeah, two, 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 is like, two is like that like honey glazed donut or something on this. Thing. But dude, I donut. I think, who said donut earlier? John said donut and I couldn't get it out of my head and it smells like a donut. Yeah. This thing's crazy. Okay. Yeah, like honey's coming with the uh, citrus almost. Uh, I'm getting like orange. If there is such a thing as an orange like fritter, that's what I'm getting on on the nose here. Yeah, I like yeah, this, it. Yeah, this has got this orange it's to it too. I'm definitely getting the I'm definitely getting I'm definitely getting the mint here too on number two. Yeah. Yeah, a little more citrus. I think I think a little a little more of the oak comes through on this too. Yeah, a lot more vanilla. It it almost isn't as the nose isn't as dark as one. Yeah, it's yeah. bright. It's definitely brighter. It's brighter, but there's more vanilla, I think. Uh, Adriana, I don't think you're gonna get any minty dill fucker in a peerless, honestly. So, excuse yeah. yourself. Oh man, man. Didn't like it. All right, Will, also, Will, and Michelle, what are you getting on number two? I'm getting a dark fruit you note know, as well. Yeah, sure. yeah, for sure. I mean, it's really coming in. If you if you kind of let it open up a little bit, it's coming on that back. All right, Michelle, we're leaning on you. What do you got? <laughs> <laughs> yep, no pressure. I have a little bit of that mint, but what I'm really picking up is like a raspberry. You can see that. Oh, yeah. It's totally, yeah, there's a very rich red fruit characteristic on here. I could see raspberry. Stop it. Everything you say, I get. <laughs> the power it's the not power as power baking spice. To the power of no. It's not as baking spice forward as one was. No, yeah. It's I get definitely more, more fruity. Number two to me is more like uh, like farmer's market. It's very fresh yeah. fruit, mint. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit floral. There's some like uh, like some artisanal honey characteristics. Scotty, what are, Scotty, what are you getting, bud? Man, it's just like a this like honey glazed donut, mint, nice orange citrus on it, little 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 layer of like dark chocolate there. Oh, some of the dark the dark, the dark fruits really come through a little bit more on this one for me too. Absolutely. All right, I'm tasting it. This, this I'm really like actual fresh mint from the garden, not like you find in you know um, in peppermint or something like that. This is like that veggie mint that you grow in the garden. When, I, when someone said mint that for the first time and I was smelling, that's exactly what I was thinking, like going out to the garden because I grow some here and just, you know, when you first smell it, yeah. Yeah, this doesn't smell like a, you know, a peppermint. God, the palate is almost like a raspberry mojito. Yeah. Mint. Yes. Like mint, mint. Minty, simple mint. Syrup, minty simple syrup, raspberry, and a hint of chocolate on there too. There's a lot of mint. That one drinks more like a rye to me. That one, yeah, that one has a lot of mint. Yeah. 
So that's very yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> do we want to pick a rye, a rye that tastes very rye -y, or do we just want to pick the one that we enjoy the most? Well, I mean, it's really about what you enjoy the most. I mean, number two might be the more rye forward, but I enjoy mint and, and those flavors. I'd rather it be mint than dill, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's pretty dominant, though. It pretty much takes up the palate. Yeah, know, it's, it's extremely, it's like chewing on some, uh, some gum. Yeah. It's almost drying on the back, too, to me. It's definitely got a drier finish on this one. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Yeah, I take it doesn't coat it. like the other one did. The, yeah, the, the chocolate that we did get on the nose is gone. Alice. Yeah, it's it, the mint just takes yeah. it, the, the mint just takes it over yeah. over the whole thing. Yeah, yeah two um, two definitely drink more. Two is definitely drink more. If you're expecting a, a you know um, a rye, this tastes more like rye. Yeah, but For I mean, sure. it's not it's not a. I, I love the, that that raspberry like kick that it has that raspberry mojito feel. Oh look, and so does Nancy Fraley. Raspberry mojito, love it. <laughs> Artisanal honey. To me, it almost comes across as like I already drank my mojito and then I was chewing on the rye at the bottom, <laughs> or no, 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 you know the leftover vegetal matter at the bottom. Not that it's vegetal, but you know what I mean. Oh yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. yeah. So going back to, to to number one. There's still so, it's got many a, it's more, got a great so many more things coming out of the glass on the nose than number two. It's got a great uh, the finish is great too. And it's nice and nice and oily too. Number one, number one also has that characteristic where it tastes a lot older than it probably is. Yeah. All right. Back to number one, all I all I smell now is heavy maple. Heavy, uh, heavy, heavy what? Maple and molasses after going back to that. Yeah, like yeah, totally. No, yeah, and I get that tobacco note now. You it's know, getting, like that it's getting tobacco. darker. It's just getting darker and richer. Number mm -hmm. one. And yeah. Sweeter. Yeah. Number uh, two. So, is more uh, punch on the so Steve H, we don't. So Steve, we don't know the proof on any of these quite yet. But John, you want to kind of remind everybody what the range could be? Yeah. So you know, our barrel in, our barrel entry proof is one hundred and seven. Um, so we're seeing anything from, you know, 107 all the way up to 114 right now. Uh, the highest we've ever had is at 116. Is it 107 for the bourbons and the ryes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, both for the same. Awesome. Yeah. All sweet mash. Yeah, strictly sweet mash. We come up the still around 130, 131 proof. Um, we'll add water. Um, and to take everything down to 107, but that's the only time our product ever touches water. Um, we like to say our water is an ingredient, not a, not a dilution in our, in our process. Hmm. Yeah, two two is very good, very good. They're they're both very good, one and two. Yeah, they are good. They're very different. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, two two drinks more like a rye though. I I mean I think that's the beauty of Peerless though. I mean most people say how different the, you know the the flavor profiles are from barrel to barrel. I mean it's insane. I mean Scott, when we were there and we and we interviewed Caleb, uh, we had the rye pie, um, and then we yeah. also had the, I think it was like an orange blossom honey one, and they were sister barrels. They were right next to each other, and they were completely yeah. completely different. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, that's a crazy thing. And, and people say, like, you know, what's one of the favorite things about your job? And I hate to sound like somewhat of a, like a, a nerd or whatever, but when you go through and you taste these barrels, you know, we pull from these ricks and you're the first one to be able to taste. It's amazing the flavor profile differences that you will find between these barrels when they're right next to each other or, you know, um, same distillation, same everything, and it's just crazy. As I tell people, you know, you're literally tasting history out of this wood um, yeah. when you get to go in and taste yeah. these barrels. Yeah, uh, that I did. I did a barrel pick at Woodenville, and it's we lined up each other. The the lot numbers from the barrels were sequential. The lot numbers from the rick location were sequential. Sequential. They were filled on the same day. Just. They were literally sister barrels. They were triplets, right? And they tasted completely different. Yeah. They were right next to each other on the rim. Uh, so, 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 
So, John, I got a quick question for you from Nancy Fraley. She says, 107 entry proof, very nice, as you get lots of water soluble notes from the oak. What's the distillation proof? Um, so we come up to still around 130, 131 proof, just depending on the day. Um, and we taste our barrels to give you a little bit more. We only make 10 to 12 barrels a day, and we taste our still every 30 minutes. Um, by doing that, we're tasting at the beginning, wow. middle, and end of each barrel that we wow. make that day. Um, so we run from 6 a.m. to about 6 p.m. Um, we don't run 24 hours, and we don't do production on the weekends. But, yeah, we come up to still around 130, 131 proof. All right. All right, guys. Well, I guess, and, uh, yes, and I guess one other, and one other thing that we really haven't even touched upon is just the sweet mash process. Yeah, you know, that's key. Um, one thing that, you know, we um, it really separates from everyone. We're one of three distillers that do a sweet mash. You know, like sour mash, after distillation, they take those leftover water and grains and they, you know, take about 20, 30 percent, put it back in their cooker. Whereas using a sweet mash, you know, we're starting fresh every time. So yeah. we're using fresh yeah. water, fresh grains, first generation yeast, which is going to allow us to produce a lot sweeter beer. Um, so we're going to get a little bit more of those citrus and kind of floral notes in there, uh, which lets us come up at our still at a much lower proof, but we're still obtaining all this good grain quality and flavor while cleaning up that alcohol. So you're even using first generation yeast? Mm -hmm. Yeah, every time. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, and you know that's why you've got it. such variety in in your beer, right? I mean, that's yeah. yeah that's, and we that's we, we add our yeast we add our yeast when it's in the cooker, not in the fermenter. So we give it a little bit of a jump start. We have to take a little bit longer in the process, so we have to cool that cook down to below a hundred degrees, um, and then we'll actually put the yeast in there. Uh, like I said, just give a little bit of a jump start, and then that there's less chance of any bacteria. Or anything else getting in there and taking right. it over too. Yeah, when uh, Caleb mentioned that last night, and I was like, oh wow, I, I I can't remember any other distiller saying that they add their yeast to the cooker, um, or, or at least mentioning that. I'm not sure if that's a if that's a thing that a lot of the, some distillers do if they don't talk about it. But when Caleb mentioned that last night, I was like, oh shit, you actually put it, you, you're you're adding the yeast to the cooker rather than you know saving it for fermenting, which I thought was really interesting. Um, yeah. So, John, it's very is, it, is it safe to say you don't have a profile yet? You know, it's not like a peerless profile. Yeah, you, yeah so you know, one thing Caleb no always, yeah, one thing Caleb always talks cookie. about is when he's making batches, you know, you can taste different batches, and they're going to be slightly different in flavor profiles. But um, he takes pride, and we take pride in finding that very unique, you know, who wants to taste the same thing Real over and over and over again? Um, so we love the fact that the batches will vary a little bit in flavor profile from batch to batch. All right. So one more question from Nancy. Uh, 130 or thereabout. That's great. Do you find a lot of diurnal variation in temperature in the warehouse or is it generally more seasonal? It sounds like you've had a little proof rise over time. Actually, uh, go ahead, John. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I mean, actually, some of our higher proof is we're – probably two years ago, um, 19 is when we've probably seen the highest proof that we put out there was a 106.5. And we've had a couple 116s this year. So we've, we actually have seen consistency, consistency in our proofs. Um, but I think, yeah, definitely seasonal, uh, wouldn't you say, John, and, and what we're getting? Because we don't temperature control anything. Yeah. Uh, Mother Nature. Mother Nature <laughs> And we still, you know, even from top to bottom, even though we don't do multi-level rick housing, everything's kept on one floor, um, you still get about a 10 degrees temperature-wise difference from top to bottom, believe it or not. Um, you know, when you step down from being up in those top, top of the ricks, it's like almost coming in the air conditioning um, a little bit. But, you know, one thing, as Joey said, that makes Kentucky so great is the fact of the changing of the seasons. Um, that hot to cold, hot to cold um, is just amazing for your aging process. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Guys. When, we, when the proof came up a minute ago, I was I went into our single barrels and looked and seen the proofs over the last over 20, 19, 20, 21. And they're all you're worse. You're seeing you're seeing spikes and peaks through the whole year with that. So oh, that's interesting. That could kind of like help you kind of gauge what you're maybe looking at down the line. Right. Yeah. Nothing, nothing like data, man. All right. Sorry. All right, guys, let's dive into uh, let's dive into number three. Also smell. Oh. 
So, so number three, maybe not as much as number one, but it definitely has a little bit of a darker type of uh, like yeah nose to it. It's the Goldilocks. Yeah, definitely nose. dark. Fruit. Dark fruit. A lot of dark fruit on it. Yeah. yeah, definitely the Goldilocks nose. It's got a little bit of first one, a little bit of the second one. There's some darkness, but not as much. A little bit of sourdough bread. Yeah, this was probably the most uh, rye bready we've had out of the three. Spot yeah. or your nose is spot on. Rye bready for sure. Yep. Yeah. But I, I get a lot. Of, I'm picking up a lot of just, I mean, just basic, like a lot of rich caramel in the notes here. Very vanilla. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very rich. The dark, the dark fruits are definitely coming through here too. Yeah, yeah. some of that mint comes out a little bit. I get, I get some of the mint, but it's not nearly as prevalent as number two. No, yeah, definitely not as much as two. And caramel as opposed to mint and chocolate. Yeah, yeah. This is There's more. A lot, of, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of dark fruit. A lot of dark fruit on this one. Yeah. Graham cracker. If you smell one, it makes one smell a lot. Yeah, yeah graham cracker. Yeah, graham cracker. Yeah, yeah, when you wait, when you go to one, one, you Ooh. you know how dark one is compared to three. Yeah. 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 And there's yeah. a graham cracker note on, on that one too. If, if anybody, yeah, yeah. Almost if you go back to almost if you go back to one, you almost get like a little bit of like a like a maple syrup like nose or something. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely more sweet. Yeah, one one has become all molasses to me now. Yeah, yeah. very sweet. Uh, you guys, you guys play, you guys play uh, Candyland growing up, and you have that 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 goopy like goopy, the goopy character. <laughs> Like like if like a if a whiskey embodied goopy it'd be number one. <laughs> yeah. That, whoever said graham cracker for number one, it's just yeah. man. Man, that and number I yeah, number else. number three number three has a nice blend of one and two, I think, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Yes, what, what about a little bit? Yeah, there's a little bit of a smoke characteristic in number three as well. A little, like a little smoke, a little smoke on three, kind of. Yep. You go from three back to two. Yeah, to Newton. Newton. That's a good note. Say again, Michelle. It smells like a fig Newton. A fig Newton. I like fig Newton. So I like I like that note. That's a cool note. So I have a question for the panel. Who wants a cigar right now? Yeah. <laughs> Custom in the office. <laughs> Why do all my notes smell like food that I love? Hey, <laughs> hey, Michelle, Michelle, I'm right with you. It's always food. No. That's your that's your olfactory goal. That they, is it is it I can say you know that uh, yeah that memory that helps you you know recognize certain things. Yep. Yeah. Man, on a number on number three on the palate, and I've only gotten this note on a few rides. I'm actually picking up like a. A uh, strawberry note on number three on the palate. There's like a sweet strawberry thing going on for me. Maybe it's like a tart, like a pop tart strawberry thing. There's uh, a, I like a pastry. That. There's like a peach pastry and yeah. donut on this thing. It's very I'm getting a lot of fruit coming yeah. through. It, actually, it's dude. It's strawberry it's donut. It's strawberry donut all day. Oh, it's even on the finish, the, it's coming out really on the finish. Have you ever yeah. had the wild berry ones, the wild berry pop tarts? It's almost like that. Yeah. Where it's like the strawberry mixed with the blueberry. It's got more heat at the back of the palate. Oh yeah. I don't know if y'all have ever had strawberry fago. I don't know if they have fago out there, but that's I grew exactly up in Detroit. What, that's, that's what it reminds me of a little bit. Speaking of strawberry. What the hell? What the hell is fago? It's over the local Detroit area soda pop company. Okay. And that strawberry. That strawberry soda he was talking about is called Red Pop. Oh man! Yeah, now that you say it, so the nose was all big for me, and the palate is not big at all. Totally big. strawberry. Yeah, it's all it's all strawberry. It reminds me of your sweater, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> your sweater. Your sweater. <laughs> so, have you ever had like a warm strawberry pie? Mm -hmm. so fried strawberry, uh, strawberry rhubarb. Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna say rhubarb. Yeah. Rhubarb. Must be a Northwest thing. Yeah. <laughs> Man. 
This, there's a, the there's point, a dark, I think it, it, it's all strawberry pop tart to me. It's incredible. There's a dark woody note on the end of it mm -hmm. that I'm trying to figure out. You all are Don't killing me. It's 9.15 here, and I haven't had dinner yet. You all are throwing that on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say about the, uh, the strawberry pie, the strawberry pie comment. So real, real quick. So Caleb, you know, he comes from the country, right? Salt yeah. Lake, grew up on a dairy farm. Me and Nick are city boys. So he tries to tell us about taste notes sometimes. You know, he'll be like, you know, it's like when you're out there in the pasture, right? You got the cows and... We're like, no, no, we don't know. We, we can't, uh, you know, we can't relate to that tasting note. So we like to have fun with that a little bit because, yeah, his palate is a lot different from ours. In that, in he's, that he's even tried to name some of them with some of those as well. Yeah, I yeah. This be good. Like yeah. Cow patty rye. Yeah, no, <laughs> cow patty <laughs> rye. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, buddy. That's about right. Nobody <laughs> really ever understands my note. Was this, someone said this was kind of the, you know, the, the in between. The yes, so, so, let's, so let's let's go around real quick. So Hendo, he's got a great palate. He's got a great finish. Yeah. So so Hendo, real quick, what do you what are your quick thoughts on number three here? I, I really feel like it's the Goldilocks core. It's like it's got some dark notes. It's got some of the traditional rye notes. Um, that strawberry thing is really cool. I get a little bit of blueberry in there too, personally. But um, yeah, for sure. Uh, Will and Michelle, what are your quick thoughts on this one? You know, I get like almost almost a cooked fruit note. It's starting to come through, you know, um, yeah. on it. It's it's very, very unique on on that. It just honestly, I'm kind of torn between one and three now. <laughs> yeah, this is so. this is a, a really good yeah. way to describe it. What I'm getting a super stewed berry note on three. Like yeah. putting a bunch of berries in a pot and reducing yeah. it under heat. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Michelle, what, what are your quick thoughts on it here? Um, it's definitely like a, a sweet strawberry or or mixed berry pie or syrup, um, but I'm still getting that little bit on the back end of that dough, like a pie crust. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Joseph Razzers, what are you getting on this one? Well, while I agree it brings a bit of one and a bit of two, I think it leans more two. Um, the graham cracker carries over from the nose to the finish, or you know, to, to the palate. I do think it's a, it, it drinks a little hot unnecessarily, and it tends to get kind of woody and dry at the back end. I can see that. It's a little. It's definitely woodier. It's that darker wood note that I was talking about. There's, yeah. there's a lot more oak on that. Yeah, but is it is it as yeah. dark? Is it as dark as number one though? No, 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 no. no, no, no. I think it's it's woodier. It's not darker. Okay, okay. I'm just I just wanted to clarify. Scotty, Scotty, what are you picking up? Scotty, what are you, Scotty, what are you picking up, man? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I. I Kind of like Michelle said, like you get that nice pastry chocolate, that mint is there. The nice, the nice kind of like sweet oak is on this thing. Um, the finish is great. That's one thing that just keeps resonating with me. I love the finish. I would agree. Yeah, I, I, don't, know, you I know, don't know. So I think that dark oh, and that dark berry, that, yeah, that berry aspect to it is just kind of it lingers like that pie and all of those. Yeah. I mean, and can we, can, yeah. we, can we all agree that we're going to eliminate two? It's between one and three. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, I agree. So let's eliminate two. And now it's between one and three. And this is going to be tough because they're so different. There's, there's, aspects, there's aspects of one that I love and there's aspects of three that I love. Um, yeah. So it, it, well, I like them, but I don't love them. Wait, which one? one I, I go to the love category. Okay. But yeah, right, so have, have we have we have we eliminated two? Are we eliminating two from the? Yeah, we're we're eliminating two. We're gonna we're gonna do one and three here as our. Well, this is the this is the two we have to pick from. Our bourbon, our bourbon, I feel like was kind of an easy pick. Uh, that number three was absolutely delicious. Uh, but between one and three for the rise, I think we have to kind of go back and forth here. I think it's just basically going to be a, you know, do we do we want something like a little bit darker and richer? Or do we want something a little bit more strawberry, uh, berry, berry compote-ish type flavor profiles? 
Have you ever gotten a strawberry note on a ride? I think when you go, I have never gotten a strawberry note on a ride in my life. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think when you number go, one, when you go from one, when you go from one to three, you'll see like three will start to really like stand out. Like the, I think the complexity factor of three will yeah. start to push oh, wow. you on a little bit. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It literally, one kind of falls a little short on the end for me. So, yeah. The number on one kills number three. The finish yeah. on three is a lot better. It's so it's so much better, and that it's it's a little bit more. So, I mean, I guess here's the thing. I mean, it is a little bit more of a, a rye profile, so yeah, it, it yeah. has all the characteristics. Yeah, that's right. But but it has like we've been talking like all night. It's that doughy aspect, that pie crust, all those the the dark fruits. I mean, I mean, just, I mean, we, we could literally have the bourbon as apple pie and number, and this rye as as a strawberry like pie. I mean, yeah. I mean, when you go back and forth, like you'll see, like I mean, when you taste one and three, you're like, holy yeah. shit, man! Three like really stands out. So They're both really good. Great rye. If you're expecting a traditional rye, you're gonna like number three better. I think number one as a whiskey taste better yeah number number you one know, to me though and, and that, one, that might be joseph's like aversion to rye because number one to me comes off more like a bourbon right where it's got the darker mm -hmm. richer, the dark cherry mm -hmm. the black cherry flavor the chocolate it's got a little bit more of a bourbon like type uh characteristic to it where zero rye notes it's yeah it's and there's yeah. no rye notes in that it's I, darker and richer whereas number three is lighter and brighter and spicier, so it's more like a rye. Yeah, like so I mean, I, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call to the chat a little bit. So based on what we're what we're uh, tasting here, chat, um, what would be more interesting to you? The kind of the darker, you know, maybe maybe more of a bourbon forward rye with number one, or the like the stewed like berry pastry of number three. Uh, let us know in the chat what you guys think. You know, we want everyone to be involved here. Um, both are really good. They're I mean, both. That, they're both. Yeah, out. They're both. Yeah. Out. I, I. I mean, here's. I guess here's the one thing. Here's the one thing we all, you know, have to consider too is we're we're picking a rye. So I mean, we want a rye to be a rye. We just picked a bourbon that picked a rye. So why do we want to pick a a rye that tastes yeah. like closer to a bourbon that we just picked? I mean, the the rye is a great. I mean, we still want a good rye. I mean, I know. I know people who don't like rye want a rye bourbon, but I mean, it's like, still, you want a nice, nice, well balanced rye whiskey at the same time, you know? Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. Since I'm not a rye drinker, I prefer yeah. the taste of wine. But I will yeah. say, for someone who doesn't drink rye, I could drink rye all day long and still get some of those that rye profile. Yeah. If I wanted to start dipping my toes into rye. So yeah. I mean. It's definitely a more of a rye than number one. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, yeah. so, so Hendo, so Hendo, between one and three, what's your vote? I'm gonna say three, just kind of like Scott said. You know, we're picking a rye. Uh, uh, I really enjoy one, but Will, uh, Will and Michelle, where are you at? Oh boy, I'm gonna go with three. <laughs> Come on, birthday boy, what do you got? Three. Number three, Michelle, where are yep. you at? I loved one, but if we're picking a rye, I'd have to go with three. All right, Joseph Brazzers. I think he. I think he. Or he already said he likes one. No, no, no. Drink with Michelle. Yeah. I mean, out of these three, I'm gonna drink number one over the other ones all day long. But we're picking a rye, and yeah, three yeah. is a rye. And uh, Scotty, what do you think, man? Yeah, I mean, I think th I think three as well. You, we have to respect that we're picking a rye, and you're going to get those profiles. So you still kind of have to lean a little bit that direction, and you know, you, there, you want you still many, want five. There's not many ryes I've ever had that literally tastes like fucking a strawberry pop tart. <laughs> right, I've uh, never. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah they're so different. Yeah, three is great. Three is great. Um. So, uh, so we got a lot of so votes for three. Uh, three, Dell. Today is three. Sergey says three. <laughs> three sounds very different. Shem is weighing in. One and three are near toss up, but I go with three for that stewed berry quality. Yeah, it's really unique. It's really yeah. good. Uh, that, for me, that, that's, 
For me, that I spice I on really, that spice on three. That spice on yeah, three just does it. I don't going, know what it is, going, but man, that's spice. going back and forth. I love the sweetness of number one, but it doesn't carry the rice spice through to the finish like number three does. I think number three, number three is super unique. It's like strawberry shortcake with black pepper all over it. So I'm 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 voting number three as well. So I think number three is the pick. Three and three, boy. Uh, John, what do you think, bud? So this one was a hard one for me, um, just because I kind of agree with you all. I would I love number one over three, but that's for my own my own reasons. Number three is a great barrel. As you said, you're picking a rye. If you are a rye whiskey lover, you're gonna love number three. Yeah. Uh, but I can also see appealing it a little bit to the bourbon drinkers. But what I love about number one. Um, is that one just reminded me, um, as you said, kind of a bourbon and it had a little bit of rock quality to it, but I just, I love number one. It's just more of my flavor profile, but number three is fantastic though, too. Yeah. Number, number one, I think it brings a little bit, listen, if we were only doing a ride, um, I think maybe number one would win, but we did a bourbon. And, uh, and so we have that bourbon flavor profile. That's absolutely great. But I think we want something that contrasts those flavors, and I think number three does it. I think this ride, uh, bottle one, is a better bourbon than the bourbon we picked. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think yeah. Michelle, but Michelle, yeah, Michelle yeah, I, I agree. agree. <laughs> I like coming from a, a flavor, you know, what you like, but also um, I don't know how many members or how many people you have. So I think, you know, one thing we always try to tell, you know, groups and stuff is keep in consideration, are you tasting this? To bourbon lovers, rye whiskey lovers, you know, who's your target audience too when you're selecting barrels? Because if I was selecting for me selfishly, I would go with number one. But like I said, if you're um, if you're trying to hit, you know, all all different types of audiences, I think you know either one be a great selection though. Honestly. Joseph, I don't I don't quite know how to take that though. But that's all right though. Hey, I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw one at you. I'm gonna throw a curveball at you here. This is where I get to have a little fun. What if just we could wave the magic wand and you could have both? Hey. Could, could could we do that? That you got the guy on the line that can make that happen. <laughs> because we have be we have awesome. two, we have two very distinct mm -hmm. uh, rye rye whiskeys here. They're um, very different. They're very different. I mean, we have a great bourbon already lined up, but man, this is. Um, I mean, both They're of these so are night and day. So, if uh, if if, if that's if that's a possibility, and we can offer that to our to our group, um, I would not be, I, I would not be, uh, you know, <laughs> I would not turn I would not turn that down for sure. I would argue we would we if we should pick rye number one over bourbon number three. <laughs> I think of the six we sampled tonight. As far as just coming oh, in, so you want you want two, oh, you want two. Of the six whiskeys we drank. The best was rye number one. So you want two rye barrels over the bourbon and the rye. I'm just offering that as a suggestion. I think this rye number one is a better bourbon than the bourbon number three we chose. <laughs> I'm not suggesting you. Because I've been going back. Listen, and forth. I love rye number one. I love it hands down. I've been going back has to taste rye number one. Between rye one but, and three. And rye but I love bourbon three. So so yeah. Bourbon so three is awesome. So, so let's do this. Does anyone have uh, the bourbon three left? Yeah. And by the, by the way, I hope my, my comment doesn't sway you all either one way or the other on picking whatever. I think both of them are great barrels. Like I said, whenever a group's asking that, um, like I said, based on my flavor profile, I enjoy number one, but number three is also a very great barrel. So let's so let's put the bourbon, the peerless uh, bourbon number three that we chose against bourbon or against rye number one. Does that make sense yeah. to everybody? Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. I want to. I want. Yeah. I want to make sure. I want to make sure you understood what I was offering there. You can keep the rye barrel. I mean, you can keep the bourbon barrel. I'm saying you can have two rye barrels as well. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Same thing a little bit, yeah. I think with the one, I think I think a little bit. I think a little we're overthinking this a little bit. I think three and three are fantastic. Bourbon yeah. and rise. Yeah, and, and remember, guys. We, I agree. Scott. Um, can can you, you know, guys? Let us know what are, what are the retail prices of these usually about? Joey, can you weigh in on that? Retail in the yeah. in the um, our SRPs on our bourbon is anywhere from sixty nine to seventy four ninety nine and. On the rise, anywhere from eighty nine ninety nine to ninety four ninety nine, right around. Okay. There's about thirty dollar difference. So if we do three of these, it's going to be three hundred bucks for somebody. Could could so, yeah, could, geez, I don't it'd know. be a little under three. I don't. Yeah, I don't well, know. Yeah, I don't well, know. With shipping, yeah, I don't know for our, be, yeah, yeah, I don't know for our patrons. Being that Peerless is That's usually fine. a higher end uh, price point, we would want to do three. Um, so I think for us, it's either we do the bourbon and pick the rye, or we do two ryes. So I think originally just, we, we decided a bourbon and a rye, and they're yeah. so significantly different. Yeah, I think you're going to hit a wider was, range of people. Just to we do that, yeah. I was just throwing that out there. Is that yeah, I absolutely. The we tasted rye number one was the best to me. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was I, would, I, I was would just, I would just, I don't offer that very often, but yeah, I don't offer that very often. But you, this is, this is a great group. You guys know what you're doing, know what you're talking about. Great palates, and uh, I think you guys would enjoy them. So I was just throwing that out there. I think John was like, "What are you doing?" That's I can awesome. see his eyes. So. Oh no, no, I don't mind. Honestly, this is the rewarding part of the job. I mean, uh, when when we sit here and do these selections and. Literally, you're deciding two, three barrels, one, you know, which rye do I take? And like I said, I love the fact that you all are even considering taking two rye over a bourbon because I feel like rye sometimes gets a little shade um, because yeah. bourbon, you know, bourbon's king here in Kentucky. So, no, I'm all for it. I, I love the fact that we're sitting here debating all this. I don't know. It's, it's tough. I keep going back and forth between one and three. I don't know which one I like more. Um, so let me let me make this clear to everyone first. We're gonna keep our barrel three uh, bourbon because first of all, as you know, that was also voted on by Caleb, so that's good shit. <laughs> so we need to keep that. It, it, it really comes down to the um, it really comes down to the rise at this point. So um, and uh, to can't get the idea. Each barrel is yielding around you know um. 200 to 215, somewhere around there, about 34, 32 to 34 six pack cases. Keep in mind, too. Uh, so that's the exact so number here. So that's a lot of bottles. That's okay. Of bottles. So, yeah. like I said, uh, well, I'd just like to give you an idea of, you know, it depends on who your target audience is. That's how I always try to remind people. To yeah, I mean, we're just, we're just trying to do the best by our, uh, our supporters. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I think the bourbon is set. We love that bourbon. When it comes to the number three yeah, bourbon, comes, is fabulous. No one's yeah, the, the bourbon's delicious. When it comes to the rye, though, I mean, bourbon three are both delicious. I mean, yeah, number three. All right, you actually do get a lot of the same notes on on bourbon three that you do on <laughs> like. Kind of like Joseph was saying, you get a lot yeah. of the same kind of notes. It, a lot of that toasted marshmallow, a lot of that same kind of richness. All right. So so my thing is, if we're going to get a lot of those richness, uh, the, the toasted uh, aspects on the bourbon, I think as a contrast, yeah. um, I'm, I'm voting three because it's so different. Even though if, if, if the rye one wasn't up against the bourbon with such of those rich, similar flavors, I would go with the one rye hands down. So I'm thinking we do the three for the rye because it's so different. It's strawberry, it's compote, yeah. and the one has the, like the, that dark, rich, toasty flavor. So what do you guys think? Three for the rye because it's so different. It's strawberry, it's compote, and the one has the, like that dark, rich, toasty flavor. So what do you guys think? Somebody, somebody's uh, repeating. <laughs> I, I think we should take the original plan. Take one bourbon, one rye. Three and three. Yeah, three and three. We want to go three and three, guys? Three and three. Uh, Scott, what do you think? Three and three? Yeah, I think, I think 33. I think we're over. I think we're way overthinking this. 
<laughs> I mean, they're before, amazing. So before long, you're doing them justice. Before long, before long, we're just gonna be blending all of these things. Like, let's just keep yeah. this simple. Like, we love, yeah. we love three and three. Like, let's just do this. I, I honestly, I think number three, the rye, the berry compote note in it is what makes it stand out and makes it different. So number three, number three, let's do it. Yay. Awesome. What's the number on that, John? Those were amazing. Just, uh, just, just, three just, is, just three with you right now. That shit is so good. 07 11 109. You got that, Joey? Yep. All right. Those are our two barrels, man. Three and three. Whiskey Blender Fraley is saying, listen, Whiskey Blender Fraley <laughs> is saying, why not blend them? That's not, <laughs> that's not surprising. <laughs> <laughs> I know, <laughs> you know, I, so you all going with number three on that one? Let me yeah, see. Yes, but now, which now, I want, now, yeah. now I'm, uh, now I'm curious. Uh, if yeah, it, yeah. If we blend it with a little bit of one, what happens? <laughs> which one? Is, I don't know. Forty one, not three. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say. Yeah. I'm gonna say Caleb picked one. Yeah, which so, one did Caleb? Which one did Caleb pick, John? Did he? Did he pick one of these at all? Uh, we do have the chosen one written on here on number one, but that's, that's going in the box. No, 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 no. This one, this one, I'll keep. What, what, uh, what was cool about number one um, was if you looked at the barrel date, it's the same day as our selection date. Oh, okay. Just different year, which I thought was pretty cool when we were tasting through them. Oh man! Adriana still needs to try this. It's so good for someone who doesn't like rye. If you if you blend it, if you actually blend bourbon, I'm sorry, the rye one with the uh, rye three, it's fucking delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jason, Guys, stop corrupting these people. Every, every, stop corrupting them. every before we sign off, everybody needs to do it right now. Take a little bit of rye one and Just blend it. It with rye three, and. If, there, if there's a chance we can blend those two barrels and just get them, then make one bottle, it'd be amazing. Oh, wow. 400 yeah. bottles. Now, um, if you're familiar with our single barrel program, uh, the one thing that we need from you all that will make this process move faster is yeah. if you want to name the barrel, want to give it a name like you're talking about Apple Funk for for the bourbon. I mean, if, if you want to give it some creative name like that, if you can get that to me or to John, um, quickly um and the logo that you may want on the aux label that 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 will help us speed the process up of getting bought get it bottled and get it to to you all yeah we'll uh we'll definitely come up with some names based on the flavor profiles here but uh yeah we can get that to you quickly okay yep i love i love how, i love how shem says a peerless burai <laughs> <laughs> it's really it's really good peerless burai yeah so apparently nancy fraley knows what she's talking about because that's good when well, you put here, here. together. Every, everybody can create their own boo rye. Just buy the rye and the bourbon. You can create your own. How about that? There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. And talk, talking last night about uh, collaborations, when you and Caleb were talking about it, you made me go back in and, and pull this off my shelf. This is the Copper and King. Oh, is that the absinthe one? This is the absinthe one. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Cheers. That's awesome Cheers. for that. And it's, it's tasting so good. Hey, y'all have the best infinity bottle in the business too, by the way. I All right, it. So, <laughs> so it looks like we have um we have, looks like we have two amazing picks, guys. We have we got an absolutely delicious bourbon. Um and the rye that's just one of the most one of the more unique ryes I've ever had. Um so I, I think we have we have two amazing picks tonight. So I'm guessing proof. Uh, John and Joey, I want to thank you from uh, from Peerless for hanging out with us tonight, and um, and thank you guys barrels with us. It's a it was a huge honor for us to actually be able to score some Peerless uh, single barrels because we, you know, me and Scott have been a fan of them for so long. Um, Hendo, uh, thanks so much for uh, for hanging out with us and picking out some some of these great barrels. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Michelle and Will, Will, happy birthday again. Uh, thank you. Michelle, thanks for Michelle. We really leaned on you. Thanks for uh, for hanging out with us tonight. Really great. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for having me. What yeah, thank time. you guys very much. This is this is awesome. This
this is this is the best part of it. And we talked yeah. about doing this and getting people involved, and this is yeah. what we wanted to do. So this we're we're happy to have everybody involved in this. So yeah, this, I mean, this is part. bucket list for everybody, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean, Hendo, this is the first pick you've ever been on, right? Yeah, first one I've ever done. It's phenomenal. Oh. Thanks, guys. Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad we can be your first, Hendo. This is all. That's awesome. Yeah, and I mean, seriously, I, you know, thank you all. We are a small craft distillery. You know, Joey knows this when. We have 24, 25 employees, and that's from front to back, to marketing, to production, everything. Um, so, you know, we don't have, you know, the, the big marketing money and things like that. So it's groups like these that really help build our brand. And uh, it's not just about selling barrels. It's about making that personal connection. So, you know, we always pride ourselves in saying, like, we hope we continue this relationship um, and we can continue to move forward and do a, uh, you know, a lot more picks after this too. So seriously, thank you all uh, for just being here and taking the time and, and uh, helping us along, our, along the way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, Joseph uh, Brazzers, thank you so much for helping us out. I know you're not a Rye fan, but what did you, what did you think of the overall lineup tonight? No, no. I apart from Bourbon One, Bourbon One uh, didn't do it for me. Everything else tasted great. There you go. Well, thank you. Um, thank you to John and to Joey. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, so I uh, just want to give a big shout out for everyone that's been supporting uh, the Mash and Journey Whiskey Club, for supporting me and Scott, um, getting in on these uh, barrel picks. We have an unbelievable Absolutely. bourbon. Uh, and I think our the ride that we selected is really different. Uh, some of the notes we got in that ride tonight are unlike anything I've had. So I'm really excited for you guys to try it. Yep. So, um, so yeah. So what, uh, Joe? Do we have a do we have a lead time on these uh, by any chance? As far as bottling, yeah, yeah. It's, like I said, as soon as you can get us the information for the Ox label, um, we'll send that off to our marketing team, our, our our graphics team, and they'll draw that up. We'll send it to you uh, to review uh, to give it your stamp of approval. We like to quote sixty days. Um, but we, 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 we tend to turn around a little faster than that. And I know that's, that's a whole lot quicker than I think the norm in the industry. So, like I said, the thing that holds us up the most is just getting information back from you, the dog's label, and getting that turned around. So we're probably looking – if we get that information from you, we can have – I'm going to send a couple more shipments out that way in August. We can probably have it to you by mid-September. Awesome. That's hmm. a good time. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. That's cool, man. Good timing. Uh, John and Joey, thanks again for hanging out with us tonight. This was unbelievable. Uh, great peerless. I mean, the peerless, the spectrum of flavors in all these single barrels were were insane. It made this very, it made it very hard to pick. So uh, I want to thank everyone for hanging out. Everyone in the chat, thanks for uh, chilling out. And um, right now, I think Big League Bourbon is live right now. After this, so go uh, go head there and uh, support uh, Big League Bourbon, a newer channel, and. Uh, I want to thank everyone in the chat, everyone uh, that got in on this pick. Glad you enjoyed it. And uh, listen, as we always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people we share it with. Uh, cheers, and we'll see you. Uh, man, when these fearless picks are available, we'll let, we'll let you know, guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers, cheers guys. Cheers. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.